Pastor Lau and Pastor Dala Haprasit would like to welcome you to the following message from New Hope International Church in Seattle, Washington. Here is Pastor Lau's anointed teaching that will change your life with love, hope, and peace in Jesus Christ. And now, Pastor Lau. Tonight, I would like to talk about the wind of the Spirit. I may not be able to finish the whole sermon. If I don't, we will continue in the next revival meeting or Holy Spirit night. But the Lord spoke to me that I should teach about the wind of the Spirit. I don't think I have ever taught this lesson in this church in the past 20 years. So this is the first time I mentioned about the wind of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to know more about you, about your Son, about your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Lord, your people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Lord, we have treasure in the Bible. We want to understand your truth, and we want to practice what we learn, Father. We want to have more faith in what you say in the Bible. Father, teach us tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit, use different words and different meanings. The Bible talks about the dove, as the Holy Spirit, gentleness. The Bible talks about the fire of the Holy Spirit, burning, getting rid of bad things out of our life, giving us power to be able to walk with God. The Bible also talks about the spirit of grace, mean the Holy Spirit gives us grace. The spirit of wisdom, the Spirit gives us wisdom. The Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Bible from the book of Genesis, the first chapter, to the book of Revelation. But unfortunately, many Christians don't understand the subject of the Holy Spirit. They know about Jesus, maybe a little bit about the Father, but they don't understand about the Holy Spirit. And that is a big missing part of Christian life because the Father is in heaven right now and the Son is in heaven right now. But the person of the Godhead, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the person who works with us on earth right now is the Holy Spirit. If I try to perform surgery without working with the scrub nurse, I don't even pay attention to the scrub nurse to perform surgery. The surgery will not be successful. I need to cooperate together with the scrub nurse and the anesthesiologist and the assistant. I need to work as a team with them in order to get the successful surgery. The same thing, we need to learn how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. And we need to learn about the Holy Spirit. Thank God, the wind of the Holy Spirit is still at work today. He is the spirit of guidance. He is the spirit who leads us to different directions according to the Father's will. And if we understand the truth about the wind of the Holy Spirit, we will appreciate and we will appropriate the work of the wind of the Holy Spirit. If you study the Bible carefully, you will see that the Holy Spirit is like the wind. What kind of wind? The wind of creation. I'm going to explain to you later on why I call the wind of creation. Because the wind of the Holy Spirit fashioned the universe and fashioned you and me. The wind of creation. He is the wind of animation. He's the wind that breathed into the life of Adam and caused him to have physical and spiritual life. He's the wind of animation. He's the wind of perception that causes us to understand, to hear the gentle breeze or gentle voice or we call still voice of the Holy Spirit. We can hear the Holy Spirit through the wind of perception and the wind of direction. He guides us each day what to do, where to go, what to say, and how we're going to do things. He guides us each day, the wind of the Holy Spirit. And He is guiding me in my practice as a neurosurgeon. He tells me what to do when I see my patient, what kind of surgery. He guides my eyes to see the x-ray, to be able to perform the successful surgery. And the wind of the Holy Spirit has been guiding me all of these years. The wind of revitalization, this wind of God will impart the life, quickening you and 
refreshing you, strengthening you to be able to go on each day with the power of God. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. From the first chapter in the book of Genesis, we learn about the Holy Spirit already. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. In other words, the earth was dark, was without form, was void, and was in chaos. And darkness was on the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Spirit is like a wind that hovering, hovering, moving on the surface of the waters. So on the first day of creation, God spoke, let there be light. And the Bible says there was light. You need to understand that God spoke when the Holy Spirit was moving at the time of creation. In the midst of that chaos and darkness, the Spirit of God was moving. And then the Father spoke and the universe came into order and existence. Listen one more time. The Holy Spirit was moving and the Father was speaking. The Father spoke. Then the disorder came into order. The chaos came into beauty. You can see the power of the spoken word of God. And you can see the power of the Holy Spirit in the same way with our life today. If we want to hear the voice of God clearly, what we're going to do with our life, who we're going to marry to, what kind of job, where, which house we should buy, what we're going to do with our clients and with our boss, how you're going to raise your kids. You need to hear the Holy Spirit every day, what to say, what to do with your finances. How do you manage your business on all these things? What you're going to say in the email? What you're going to write on the Facebook? Not with your flesh, but by the Holy Spirit. In order to hear the voice of God, the same principle still working today. Number one, you need to let the wind of the Holy Spirit move in your life. For example, in a meeting, if we allow the Holy Spirit to move, then the Father speaks. When you allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life every day, that's why Paul says, stir up the fire of God on the inside of you. You need to learn how to stir up, how to hook up, how to connect to the Holy Spirit. And I know this is not easy for some of you, and some of you may not even know how to do it. The revival meeting like this is a time to learn how to hook up, learn how to surrender, how to stir up, and how to flow in the Spirit of God. So when you go out in the shopping mall, at the bus station, or in your workplace, you can hook up to the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit starts to move on the inside of you, hovering over you, moving, then God speaks. You can hear clearly the voice of God when the Spirit of God is moving in your life. Amen. Many times God speaks to me when I am in this kind of meeting. God speaks to me. The word of prophecy comes because God is moving and God speaks. Amen. Therefore, you should not miss the meeting where the Holy Spirit is moving. You should be there because that's when you're going to get direction from God and God's going to tell you what to do. And you will not make a lot of mistakes. You will not make a lot of wrong decisions in, in life. A lot of us sometimes make a lot of mistakes because we just go by what we feel. We never listen to God. God knows the future, what you need to do and what you should not do. So we need to learn how to listen to the voice of God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were all present at creation. If you understand how God works together, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then you know how to relate to God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. John chapter 5, verse 26, talking about the Father. At the time of creation, He and the Son and the Holy Spirit we're working together in the same way like they are doing right now with us. John 5, 26 say, For as the Father has life in himself, so 
He has granted the Son to have life in Himself. Everyone say granted. So the Bible clearly says that the Father is the source of everything. He is the source. It's like a power plant sent out electricity into the houses. That power plant, the source of everything, come from the Father. He's the one who command healing to happen to your body. He's the one who command money to come into your bank account. He's the one who command protection. He is the source of everything in your life. Everyone say source. Look at what Jesus has done for you. Acts chapter 2 verse 22. Men of Israel, hear this word, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst. The Father is the source, and the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the channel. That's why whenever you pray, you pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen? I noticed some Christian pray like this. Jesus, you do this for me. No, you don't pray to Jesus. You pray to the Father. He's the source. And then, in the name of Jesus, because Jesus is the channel that God will flow His power and blessing into our life. Who execute that power to happen on earth right now in our generation? Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He poured out this which you now see and hear. So the Holy Spirit is the power of the source. In other words, God the Father say, yes, healing, for example. Give healing. And that will be done only through the name of Jesus. And who causes the healing to happen? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is at work on earth now to execute what the Father wants to do in our life. That's why as Christians, we need to have intimacy or deep relationship with the Holy Spirit and know how to cooperate with Him. So from day one, the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of the Lord was at work in creation. He ignited God's spoken word. When God spoke, the Holy Spirit ignited, caused things to happen. There's one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But when God, the Father, spoke, the Holy Spirit makes something happen on earth here. Amen? And the Holy Spirit was working with the Father to put the stars in the sky. He's the one who put the earth in the universe. The Bible says in Job chapter 26, verse 13 to 14, by His Spirit, He adorned the heavens. Who put star in the sky, in the universe? The Spirit. God the Father is in heaven. He spoke. But the Holy Spirit put the star here. Put the star here. Put the star over there. The Holy Spirit was at work at the time of creation. Amen? The same powerful Holy Spirit executed whatever the Father designed to happen. The Father is a designer. He designed. He commands. He's a source. But the Holy Spirit makes things happen. For example, when God spoke, the Holy Spirit worked, dry ground was separated from the waters. When God the Father spoke, the Holy Spirit made the grass and the tree grow up on the ground. When God spoke, the Father spoke, the Holy Spirit made all the fish to swim in the ocean. Amen? So the Holy Spirit was the one who executed everything, make things happen on earth here. Psalm chapter 33, verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. God spoke. And all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. We're going to learn later on. Whenever the Bible say the breath of God, it means the Holy Spirit. The Bible say clearly every time when the Bible talk about the breath of God, it means the Holy Spirit. Psalm chapter 33, verse 9. For he spoke, and it was done, and he commanded, and it stood fast. The way the Father works is by speaking. 
And then the Holy Spirit perform miracles, signs and wonders to make something happen on earth here. So they all work together, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's why Christians who don't understand the work of the Holy Spirit, who don't have any clue, who are not even filled with the Holy Spirit, who don't even care about the Holy Spirit, who reject the Holy Spirit and run away when the Holy Spirit is moving, is not very wise. You need to run to the Holy Spirit. You need to learn how to hook up to the Holy Spirit. You need to learn how to surrender to the Holy Spirit. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to work on the inside of you because He is the one who can make something happen on earth here by the will of the Father. The more you understand the Bible, the more you want the Holy Spirit. And the more you will surrender, the more you are hungry, the more you want Him to work in your life, the more you want your church to have the Holy Spirit moving in the church. Amen? He is the answer. He is the power. He is the one who's going to make the church different, not man. Amen? He's the one who anoints you to preach. He's the one who anoints you to teach. He's the one who heals the sick, not any man. I cannot heal the sick. Only the Holy Spirit can heal the sick. Amen? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 say, Has in this last day spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the worlds. The Bible said the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit work together. What carry your voice out? The wind or the breath. When you speak, air come out from your lung, go through your vocal cord, and come out to your mouth, and you can hear. So the Holy Spirit is the breath or the wind of God. God the Father speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's why the more you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the more you can hear the voice of God. That's why I love the Holy Spirit. That's why I love to be touched by the Holy Spirit. I love to see people touched by the Holy Spirit because the more they are filled with that breath, that wind of God, they can be closer to God and they can hear clearly from God what they need to do in their life. The Bible says clearly that everything that God wants to say and want to tell and want to reveal to us come by the Holy Spirit. Let me read this long passage, and you will see. I'm going to read it slowly. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 to 16. This is what Apostle Paul said. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age. In other words, not the wisdom of the world, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. The things of the world one day are going to come to nothing. The companies, all the university, all these things are going to come to nothing. You may own a big company. That will come to nothing. Amen? All the nations will come to nothing because God only will last forever. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the age for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew. So people in the world, no matter how smart they are, they may go to university for 20 years, they may have five PhD diploma. The Bible says, none of these people know the wisdom of God. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. In other words, if they know, they will not reject Jesus today. They will become Christian and come to church now. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Come to this point, God said, so many things, so many wisdom, so many Good things in heaven, in the storehouse of God that God wants us to know, to see, to experience the wisdom, the mystery of God that we don't know now. We haven't even seen. We have not even heard. We have not even experienced. God wants to give to us and show to us. Continue to listen. Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. How does God 
reveal the mystery, the wisdom, the knowledge, the insight and understanding, the power, the anointing, the joy, every good thing in heaven through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. No one knows the heart, the mind of God, or what is in his mind except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man wisdom, teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. The Holy Spirit knows the things of God, the wisdom of God, and He will teach you and me. So when you read the Bible and you flow with the wind of the Spirit, you flow with the Spirit of God, when you read the Bible, the word, the truth will jump out from the Bible pages and you will understand the deep things of God that you never understand before. And you can discern when somebody teaches you wrong things. When somebody comes with heresies and wrong teaching, when you listen, oh, no, 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 that is wrong. I'm not going to accept that. So the Holy Spirit will reveal. That's why the church needs to be open and surrender to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? The Holy Spirit will reveal. Okay. These things we also speak, not in words which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. What does it mean, he who is spiritual? He who is spiritual is a Christian who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. Surrender to the Holy Spirit, not walking in the flesh in the canality, but walk by the leading and the control of the Holy Spirit every single day. And I pray that all of members in the church and all of you in this room will be spiritual people, not carnal people, people who are led and controlled by the flesh, by the tummy, by the carnal thinking, by the worldly system, by the secular thinking, but you are controlled and led by the Spirit of God. Amen. He who is spiritual judges all things. I mean, you can discern what is right, what is wrong. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So you can see the work of the Holy Spirit here. The breath of God, the wind of the Holy Spirit come to you and lead you to the wisdom of God guide you, tell you what to do. Amen? I don't know. I share with you about this story yet. Um, God just remind me right now to share. About six weeks ago, a gentleman walked into my office. He is a Christian man, and he pray and pray and pray. He has significant back pain in the mid-thoracic area here, and the pain spread all over to his chest. He came to see me a year ago, and I look at the scan and say, nothing to be done. You need to go to see pain doctor and got some injection. And he did. He went off for a year, never came back because I said, you don't need surgery. I'm a surgeon. You don't need me. A year later, he showed up six weeks ago. And he came with the old films that I ordered that time. He came back and said, my doctor sent me back to you. I'm still in pain. No one can help me. Can you help me? When I look at him, when he first walked into the room, I was shaking my head in my heart. I cannot shake like this in front of my patient. There were things I rejected them. But in my heart, waste of my time today. You don't need surgery. You don't need surgery. This is waste of my time. And he said, I still have the same pain. I suffer so much. He looked healthy outside, very muscular, very healthy man, Christian man. I said, let me look at the scan one more time. So I put up the scan on the x-ray boxes. And at the beginning, I look at it, nothing. I'm going to put the film back in the envelope and walk back to the exam room and say, 
Mr. So and So, I'm sorry. You go home. I cannot help you. But just before I pull the film down, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The still voice, the gentle breeze of the Holy Spirit came into the room, and He said, "Look at this and this and this cut in that CT scan." So I look, and then He point my eyes to the area, and He show me the abnormality that I never saw. And not only that, He said, "You fix this, and I'm gonna tell you how to fix it." And I never operate on this kind of situation before. Even in the University of Washington, I've been a neurosurgeon for 20 s o m e t h i n g years. I never operate on anybody with this situation in my life. And God say, "I'm gonna guide you in the operating room and tell you exactly what to do." I walk back in and say, "Hey, I think you need surgery." <laughs> At the time of the operation, He told me exactly: cut this, cut this, cut, cut this. Whatever that I never done before in my life, but he said, "Don't worry, it will be fine." Follow up two weeks later, six weeks, five weeks, six weeks later, the man was pain free. <laughs> I told him, "This is not Doctor Lau. This is Doctor Jesus, <laughs> the Holy Spirit." Amen. Now you understand when I talk about the wind of God, you hear the voice, you hook up to Him. I remember when I first went to revival meeting in Portland and then in Tampa, Florida. I fly there maybe two times a year. You have to fly somewhere. You get there, you get touch. Oh God, touch me! Oh, I feel so good. I, I was drunk in the Holy Spirit. I was laughing. I was slain in the Spirit and crying, and God touched me. I got up. I feel the lingering of the Holy Spirit for maybe a day, and then disappear. I came back home, oh, so dry again. Oh, I need to fly back there again to get the touch of the Holy Spirit. But I, it's another six months. They have another meeting, so I just waiting and waiting for the meeting. And I did that for 10 years. I keep Pastor Dano. We kept flying back there to get touch and come back. And a few days later, the anointing leak out. We don't feel anymore. We don't feel the Holy Spirit anymore, but you know, I and she never gave up. We keep going, we keep seeking, we never give up. We keep being touched, being touched, being filled, being filled, being touched in the meeting, and again, and again, and later on, I began to lay hands. So whenever I lay hand, the Holy Spirit passed through me. When you in the water of God long enough, it will stick on you to the point that it will never go away. When you put something in the water, just a little bit, come out. After a while, it's dry. But if you marinate to the point that just so soak with that water, with that wind, with that fire, eventually the anointing, the presence of God will stay with you, stick with you, 24/7. And I believe I come to that point now. I even perform surgery. I feel the anointing on me. I feel the fire. In me, Amen. But you need to learn how to press in, how to soak and get hungry and get filled. It may take many years for you, like me. I mean, it took me 10 y e a r s to come to this point of my life. But I never gave up because I want the Holy Spirit badly. I want Him to guide me and anoint me and help me in everything I do. Amen. Amen. So I just want to give you some homework. Some plan in your life that one of these day, maybe five years from now, ten years from now, everywhere you walk, you feel the glory of the Lord like Adam. Do you know that Adam did not have to wear clothes? I don't mean that I'm going to take my clothes off, <laughs> but Adam did not have to wear clothes because he was so covered by the glory of God that he was so filled with the presence of God. Amen. When God created Adam. The Bible say that God breathed into him. The inbreathing of the Holy Spirit is a focal point for what happened on the day of creation. Genesis chapter one verse twenty six. Then God said, "Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and on and on." That is God' intention: is to create man 
out of the dust. He spoke, and the dust come together in the form of a man. And how did this man Adam become a living being? The Bible says in Genesis chapter two, verse seven, God breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living being, who made Adam become a living being. The Holy Spirit, God breathed into him the Spirit of God, went into him. He became a living person, physically and spiritually. I believe that the first thing, when Adam opened his eyes at the beginning, it's just, just like a the mud come together. You know, look like a man mud, dust come together. But when Spirit of God breathed into him, he. Become alive, open his eyes, and when he opened his eyes, the first thing he felt in his life is not the Father, but the Holy Spirit that is moving on the inside of him. The glory of the Lord just fill him up, and that's why he did not have to wear cloth because he's so filled with the Holy Spirit. And the first word he heard from God: "Be fruitful and fill the earth." The first word he heard is the word of blessing. Fill the earth, multiply, take dominion over the fish of the sea and the bird of the air. God bless him right away. Job chapter thirty-three, verse four: The spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The first creation, Adam became a living being by the spirit of God. The breath of God, the Spirit of God. Today we are the product that God do the reproductive system, that a man and a woman get married and eventually have a baby, get pregnant. This is the system that God made for all the human being that we can have babies and next generation and next generation. But the same principle is that the Spirit of God. Is the one who gives you and me life. Amen. How many people want life? How many people want death? Like bacteria, virus, sickness, disease, poverty, depression, broken relationship. All the bad things are death, a form of death. But life is from the Holy Spirit. That's why. I don't understand why Christians run away from the Holy Spirit. They don't understand that the Holy Spirit gives life. It's good for them. They will look younger than age. They will not get sick easily. Can you imagine? You walk out there. How many virus and bacteria attack you? A lot of people cough around you. But when the Spirit fill you up and you stir up, the Spirit gives life. You are not sick easily. You don't need to take a lot of medications. John chapter twenty verse twenty two. These two scriptures are so clear, but that when the Bible said the breath of God, it means the Holy Spirit. John chapter twenty verse twenty two. And when he had said this, he means Jesus. He breathed on them. It means on the disciple, and said to them, "Receive the Holy Spirit. The wind of God, the breath of God, is symbolic of the Holy Spirit." So when Jesus breathed on the disciple, they received the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And the same principle is applied to our spiritual life here. Your salvation comes by the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who convicts you, show you that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God, and when you accept that, the Holy Spirit work in you to be born again. And when you accept Jesus, you will you are born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, when you listen to all this teaching, you can see that the Holy Spirit is involved in everything in your life. You should let Him in, get involved with you, involved with your life, with your salvation, with your healing, with your work, everything. Let Him get involved because He is the one who gives life. The Spirit of God gives you life, gives you good things. Amen. Like a supernatural special pill, you take in and then you become healthy and strong. 
But it doesn't happen that way because not every Christian yield to the Holy Spirit. We still sin. We still rebel against God. We still have doubt. We don't walk by faith. We have a lot of things in our life that quenched and pushed the Holy Spirit away from working in our life. That's why we need to come to church and learn how to cooperate, how to yield, how to flow with the wind of God, how to work with Him and how to allow Him to work on the inside of us. Amen? Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5, the Bible say, Thus say God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which come from it, who give breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. So God is the one who gives breathing and life to every human being. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord who stretched out the heavens and lay foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him. God is the one who gives you life by the Holy Spirit. Form the spirit on the inside of you. That's why we need to really learn how to walk with God and surrender to God and let God give life to us. Amen? The Holy Spirit sustains life. Psalm 104, 29 to 30. You hide your face. They are trouble. When God hides His face from you, you are in trouble. I want God to look at me all the time and shine His light upon me, not hiding His face. When you sin against God, when you rebel against God, when you turn on the pornography in the internet, when you begin to gossip and lie, you cause God to turn His face away from you. The protection is gone. And what happened? You get attacked by the enemy. That's why you cannot blame God that sickness come to you or the devil attack you. You make yourself. Make God turn His face away from you. The best thing is to live a life of worship. You know worship means, it doesn't mean singing a song. The life of worship is not singing a song. The life of worship is mean live a life, make God happy. When God is happy, He look at you all the time. Yes, son, daughter, go for it, go for it. He look at you and you are not in trouble. He protects you. His eyes are upon you. You hide your face and they are troubled. You take away their breath and they die and return to the dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. The scriptures say that the spirit of God gives us life. And the Spirit of God does not only create life, He also maintains life. He also renews life. He also nourishes. He also rejuvenates. He also refreshes you. The Holy Spirit refreshes your life all the time. Amen? When Pastor Da came back from the revival meeting in Los Angeles a couple of weeks ago, she said, I don't know why. I have so much energy. I couldn't sleep. I had to wake up and clean up the whole house. Thank God she cleaned up the whole house. She woke up at 5 a.m. She couldn't sleep. So much energy. And the same thing people ask me all the time. Why you just keep going? You don't look tired. Because the Holy Spirit on the inside gives us so much energy, so much strength, revitalization and, and power and sustain you. I don't know if, if people listen to this teaching and still run away from the Holy Spirit I think they need brain transplant. <laughs> you need to run to the Holy Spirit. He is the one who gives you life, sustain your life, give you all the good things. Amen. Job 27 verse 3. As long as my breath is in mine and the breath of God in my nostril. So the Holy Spirit, the breath of God means the Holy Spirit give you life, keep you going. You live longer life than dying soon. You don't have to die soon die at young age because the Holy Spirit sustain you. Romans chapter six, uh, chapter 8, this is how you let the Holy Spirit really work in you beside laying on of hand and impart the Spirit upon you. The Apostle Paul say clearly how you live a life that the Holy Spirit can work in you. Romans chapter 8 verse 6 and 13 and 14. The Bible say, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. What does it mean? It means if you 
entertain or please the carnality of your flesh all the time. You put your flesh ahead of God. You please your flesh all the time. If you want to gossip, you want to turn on internet and watch some bad picture, and you just do it. You are carnally minded. You just please your carnal mind all the time. The Holy Spirit cannot work on the inside of you, and it will lead you to death. Don't blame God. You do it yourself because you quench Him, and when you quench Him, then death, sickness, all the problem will rise up in the inside. Broken home, poverty, sickness, disease, bad things happen. Amen. But if you spiritually minded, I give you example. Yesterday, a missionary from Thailand stayed at our house. A missionary, they, we know them for 20, 30 years. And we invited to come because the dad passed away and we're going to go to funerals tomorrow at Philadelphia Church. And he began to talk about some thing in Thailand about leadership in Thailand, Christian leadership. My mind, my carnal mind say, let's go on to talk about this and talk about their problems, my carnal mind. But the Spirit say to me, no, you're not going to gossip about, I'm not saying that he gossip, but I can go on with the conversation and gossip to go on to be negative talking. The Holy Spirit told me, no, keep your mouth shut and just pray for this leader. I keep my mouth shut. I am spiritually minded. I want to please the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. And you live like that. The Holy Spirit can flow and work on the inside. And you save yourself from many problems. Again, how many people want to die soon? How many people want to be sick? How many people want to live a life that in many forms of death? How many people? No one? This is the way you go to the form of death. Be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. How many people want life and peace? If you live according to the flesh, you will die. Definitely, if they are not Christian, they die in hell. But this part of the Bible is not talking about hell. Die on earth here. No peace, no joy, no money, sick, family breaking down, all the problem, depression, taking a bunch of medication. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the Son of God. So this is how you walk. Always be led by the Holy Spirit. Please the Spirit of the living God. Job chapter 33, verse 4. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty give me life. I want to conclude the teaching tonight here. Stop and continue next time. Next time, we will talk more about the practical point of how to be led by the wind of the Holy Spirit. Today, I gave a lot of theory, a lot of understanding about how the Holy Spirit works in our life. In conclusion, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to move, the wind of God to move. And when the wind of God moved, God spoke. When God spoke, we hear the voice by the Holy Spirit. And we get the direction. We get the guidance. Then we will not make mistake. And when you allow the Holy Spirit to fill you, to work on the inside of you, and you make a decision to cooperate with Him, to let Him have more control of your life, what you need to do, is to not be carnally minded, not to please your flesh. Say no, die to your flesh, and say yes to the Spirit of God. And then it will bring life to you. The Holy Spirit already wants to give life to you. He's there to give life, but the problem is that you quench Him, you push Him away by living in carnality. You need to go opposite way, living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. The Spirit of God give us life, maintain life, refresh us, strengthen us. Amen. I told many pastors that the Spirit of God never destroyed the church. It will build the church. Amen. It may look wild in a meeting, but it will build the church. 
make people humble, make people love one another, less carnality in the church, make people love one another. One of the signs of being carnally minded is lack of love. I want to give you the homework. You ask yourself, do I walk in love? If the Spirit of God control you, you will love people. Amen? You like to greet people. You like to say hi to people. You like to encourage people. You are not discriminating people. I like this group. I don't like this group. I like that person. I don't like this person. That is carnal. No matter how they treat you, you need to love people. Love is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I can tell a person walk in the Spirit or not, not because they fall down or because they cry and laugh during laying on of hand. You walk in the Spirit, you love people. Period. Amen? You just want to help people. You, you just love everybody. You just see everybody. You just love them because the Spirit of God is controlling you. The Spirit of God loves people all the time. He shows compassion. He wants to bless people, not to attack people or division and strive and divided in the church into groups and that group, my group, that group, and Chinese group and uh, Thai group and Laotian group and you know, American group. That is carnality. There's no such thing in the heaven. We all one together in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So ask yourself every day whether you are walking in the Spirit or not. Amen. Praise the Lord. I need to say more. I love you. I love you. Why don't we practice that in the church and practice that in the family? You see your wife, you say, I love you. Amen. When you see brother and sister in the church, you should say, I love you. Amen. The more you say, the more faith you have in that. You hear it. We should practice love. I love you. And what can I help you? Can I carry this for you? Can I give you the best seed? Give you the best. Love one another. People need love. Let's turn to each other and say, I love you. <laughs> A lot of love. <laughs> the more the Holy Spirit controls you, the more you will love people. It's a sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's love. And the Bible says, faith works by love. Faith works by love. Why your prayer didn't get answered? Because you don't love. If you pray, God, I believe you're going to do this for me. But God says, where is love? Because faith works by love. If you don't love, God will not answer. You need to love. Jesus said, the commandment I give to you is to love one another. And when you love one another and obey my command, I will manifest myself to you. The presence of God is going to be stronger. This manifest presence of God will be around you because you love people. Amen. Valentine is coming. <laughs> Lately, God really convicted me about love. We need to build a community of love. Love one another. Amen. And when people walk in, they will say, yeah, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, people will not say they are filled with the Holy Spirit because you walk like this. <laughs> like shaking or, or speaking in tongue, la, 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 la. No. People know you are filled with the Holy Spirit because you love. Amen. <laughs> That's why some people don't like charismatic church, Pentecostal church, because people walk like, I see some, somebody in some church walk like this. And I say, what happened to you? I'm filled with the Holy Spirit right now. <laughs> and raise love. I don't care. I think that's demon to me. The Holy Spirit will love people. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I saw one YouTube they say that this woman is filled with the Holy Spirit and the woman walked like this the whole time I said wow your brain is going to be in trouble and they said this is the Holy Spirit I said no that is not the Holy Spirit that is demon 
Then another lady come up and prophesy. This is in the YouTube. Come up and prophesy. That is not Holy Spirit. That is demon to me. Because Holy Spirit is loving, kind, compassion, not shaking the head like this. <laughs> I'm serious. I saw on the YouTube and they claim that that is the Holy Spirit. I don't believe it. <laughs> Amen. The Holy Spirit will never manifest anything contradict to His own character. It's humble, joy, love, submission. He's, he's God. He will reveal Himself as God, not as something weird like animal. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whew, I feel <coughs> I feel the fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name. <laughs> uh, so how many people are convinced now that the Holy Spirit is good? Amen. How many people say, I want more Holy Spirit? I yield to the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to run away. Amen. And I promise God, I tell you the truth. I promise God all the days of my life, I will keep the water in this house pure. The water means the Holy Spirit. I will not allow any wrong spirit, demonic spirit to come in like what you call counterfeit come in to touch people I'm going to live my life holy and pure no corruption I think I'm going to try to keep the pure water in the church Amen so that the church will last to the end until Jesus come back we are not playing game we want the real move of God we trust that this message is ministered to you if you would like more information about New Hope International Church or other teaching CDs, please contact us at 206-275-1042. You may also visit our website online at www.newhopeinternationalchurch.com. To them all gathered in your name, I lift to you this new praise song. All the wrongs I have ever done have been washed away by your only son. Bring me your tired, you said. Bring me your weak. Bring me your hungry masses. We seek your glory. Your glory.